One of the next painting tutorials on this channel is going to be about painting like Rembrandt, but only using an airbrush. Now I've done a few of these already, and it's about seeing how close we can get an acrylic airbrush painting to look like an old master's oil painting. We'll talk about this later, but this video is about mistakes and what to do when something like this happens. I was installing this monitor arm next to my painting so that I could have something to hold my reference photos while painting. I accidentally dropped it on the table below where I hold my paints and this small bottle of black paint somehow splashed onto my Rembrandt copy. I tried not to panic, so I immediately tried to wipe off the paint but since the paint layers underneath weren't fully cured yet, those layers were actually removed with the black paint. So what I have is a mess of some splattered black paint and some gesso showing through underneath. I honestly thought that this painting was over and there was nothing I could do to save it. But with some techniques that I've used on past mistakes, I was able to remove this black paint along with the layers of paint underneath it to slowly revive this painting. So instead of scrapping this one, I decided to make a video to show you the techniques that I used to repair my painting. And the results came out pretty good. So I guess that this is going to be a life giving you lemons type video. And this is a small one, but we've all had our share. But with a bit of patience and some resolution, you could really come around and fix them. The two problem areas are this first one up on the cheek and also this larger one, which is over the mouth. Since the one on the cheek is smaller and it's just covering up a highlight on the flesh tone, I figured I'd start with this one first. There's a bunch of ways to repair this, but I thought the easiest way would be first to remove this black paint. So I'm starting with an ink eraser and trying to erase the darkest parts of this, mainly toward the outside of the splatter. I was able to erase a fair amount of it, but there's still this dark black ring around the outside of it. And since it's so small, I decided to use an X-Acto blade to see if I could scratch it out. And this worked pretty well, but the problem is that the X-Acto blade pulled out very bright highlights, and then the eraser pulled out some softer ones. So I had two different textures, some really bright and then some mid-tones. Now you may be wondering why I don't just take an opaque paint and paint over the top of it. And of course this is possible, but if you spray an opaque lighter color over an existing color, you get a very strange blue-gray shift when painting with an airbrush. I've always found that blue shift very difficult to control, especially on a portrait, so I decided to make this repair only using transparent colors. I switched over to my airbrush, and I'm using a flesh tone mixture that I mixed for this portrait using some sepia, some burnt umber, and some scarlet red. I was hoping that I could spray this color over the top of it and then use my eraser to blend it out. And unfortunately, when I did this, it seemed to get worse. The spot was still there, but instead of being a lighter spot, now it was a darker one. So I erased into it further to lighten it up, and I just realized that this technique wasn't working, so I had to use something else. I didn't want to do this, but what I decided to do was remove all the paint and then start over in this small area. I'm using a cotton swab that has some 4012 reducer on it, which works as a very mild solvent. This will just break up that paint binder and help remove the paint. So I took my time with this, just using multiple Q-tips, each time adding a small amount of solvent, then using the other side of the Q-tip to lift up the paint. And within a few minutes, I was able to remove all the paint, and now we have a clean spot of canvas to work with. Since I'm using a transparent paint, this will work well, because I could spray into this area to darken it. And since it's a solid color of white, it'll darken evenly. If there was any small spots of paint left in this area and I sprayed a transparent color over the top, they would darken up too. So you'd get a real mess of some lighter areas that darkened up and then some really dark spots in the middle. But since this area is now just a single value, we won't have to worry about that. So I'm going back to my airbrush with that transparent flesh tone in it. And all I want to do here is try to spray an even layer of paint in this whole area. I don't want to just spray a large area of paint because the overspray will darken up the flesh tone surrounding this spot. So what I'm doing instead is spraying a bunch of very soft dots in the center of this. And I'm trying to keep these even, just working from one to another to eventually fill up this whole area with a very subtle texture. The reason I want some texture here is because it'll match the existing texture of the skin tone surrounding it. So within a few minutes, I was able to get an even value of paint on this, but you can still see that it's a pretty obvious spot. And the reason that it's so obvious is that there's this very thin ring around it where some of that transparent paint 
got onto the paint that was originally there and darkened it up, giving us a dark ring. So what I'm doing here is using my ink eraser to erase out this ring the best I can and then just try to blend it into the surrounding area. One lucky thing about this painting is that it had a lot of texture in it because the goal of this one was to try to replicate things like brush strokes using an airbrush. So I'm using the texture to my advantage, trying to add a similar texture in this area to the areas surrounding it. That way, hopefully, this looks like one seamless transition and viewers won't even be able to notice it. I sharpened this eraser to a very sharp point so I could really get in and pull out those darker spots. And then I'll work my way outside the initial area to try to blend these textures all together. And at this point, this is pretty good. I was pretty happy with this. All I'm gonna do is use my airbrush to lightly glaze a thin layer of paint over this whole area to kind of set everything in place and push everything back a bit. Now this portrait isn't complete yet. I still need to work on adding some texture to the skin and pull out some more highlights. So I'll come back to this area later as I'm working on those highlights and see if I can blend everything together to make this fully disappear. But at this point I'm happy. So let's move along to the two next parts. This really bad one that's on the side of the mouth right here and this small dot on the chin. This paint on the mouth is kind of a worst case scenario because I didn't even notice that the paint splattered onto my painting. So in a minute when I noticed this one, it actually had a chance to drip. So we have this line that starts just above the mouth, goes right through it, down to the chin. So this one's gonna be a lot more difficult than the first one, but we're just gonna have to work slowly, work on one part at a time, and just try to get this to blend in to the painting underneath. Just like the cheek, I started with the least aggressive technique I could use, which was an eraser to try to remove the paint. When that didn't work, I tried the X-Acto blade, and then I just realized at this point that I need to remove this paint just like I did before with the one on the cheek. So going back to the Q-tip with some 4012 reducer on it, I just blotted this over this area to just kind of break up that paint underneath and then used clean Q-tips to help lift it up. I always paint with my paintings vertically mounted to a wall, so I'm being very careful here not to have too much solvent on this Q-tip, because if I do, it runs the risk of getting on the paint and then dripping down like this original one. That would create a whole nother mess that I'd have to clean up, so a small amount of reducer here is gonna go a long way. So a few passes with this Q-tip and solvent really did a good job at removing not only the black paint, but my painting underneath it. And I'm aware that at this point, this probably looks worse because now you just have a very large white spot in the painting. But just like we did before on the cheek, it's gonna be a lot easier to fill in an area that's completely blank rather than an area that has different types of paint in it. Remember that the paint that I'm using is transparent, so it can only darken whatever it's sprayed on. It can never lighten it. This was why removing all that paint first was so important because now we have a light area and this paint on top of it is just gonna darken it up. So we wanna build this up slowly to start matching the values that surround it. And just like before, I'm basically spraying in a bunch of small soft dots that are next to each other. And I'm trying to overlap them so that when you look at this from farther away, it looks like an even tone of paint. Some of the overspray from the airbrush got onto the completed part of the painting next to this mistake. And again, because I was spraying a transparent color, it darkened this surrounding area. So I'm using my eraser here with a sharp point on it to lightly go over this area. I'm applying a very small amount of pressure, and what's happening here is it's just removing a thin top layer of that paint, not all of it. And when a thin layer of paint is removed, it lightens the area. Now I'm obviously gonna have to go back to my airbrush and spray back over that dot because the value there is still too light. But I wanted to make sure that I removed some of that overspray before I added any more paint to the center so that this area surrounding this mistake doesn't just keep getting darker and darker. This mistake area was covering up a part of the face where some facial hair was, basically a mustache. So I'm gonna use that to my advantage and see if I can kind of add some darker shadows in here to make it look like some facial hair. And Rembrandt painted a lot of the detail areas pretty soft in his paintings, almost like that fumato technique that we talked about when we painted the Caravaggio one. So since the texture is subtle and soft, that's why I'm using the airbrush freehand. I'm not using any shields or skin texture templates for this part of the painting. Of course, there are gonna be a few sharper lines like this one separating the upper lip from the lower lip. So in order to paint this in, I'm just using a ripped piece of paper 
lining it up with that edge and then spraying this paint right over the top of it. This is masking off the lower lip so the paint only sprays above it. So this is getting better, it's improving, but it's still pretty obvious. So I'm gonna go back to that eraser and again, I'm going to focus on that dark halo that kind of built up around this mistake area. Since I'm using Createx illustration colors here that I diluted with some distilled water, this paint doesn't form a very solid bond when it dries. And this is a very good thing because this is going to allow me to continually work into it and keep erasing it out. Even if I let this dry for two, three days, I could still come back to it with the eraser and just keep working away. There's a very thin highlight just above the upper lip and below that facial hair that basically just runs parallel with the top lip. So I wanna make sure that I get out all this dark paint within this highlight, especially this darker soft dot over to the right here. So I'm scratching this out in some horizontal hatching strokes. This way it'll match the texture that's beneath it. And then from here, I'm just gonna switch off between my airbrush, laying down some paint, and then going over to the eraser, erasing into it. It's definitely a slow process, but this is also the same technique that I use on basically all of my portraits. Using that repetitive technique of adding paint and remove it also makes it a lot more forgiving because you're slowly working toward the final painting instead of trying to get it all done in the first shot. So even though I'm restoring a mistake here, it's essentially the same process that I've been using throughout the whole painting. So this is looking a lot better. I could still notice it there. It's not perfect. We'll definitely have to come back to this and adjust it later. But for now, what I want to do is erase out this area where the black paint dripped down the canvas. Again, I started with the least aggressive technique that I could use, which is just an eraser. And this time it actually worked pretty well. I don't know if you're able to see it in the video here, but I'm actually using a lot more pressure on this one. And I noticed I was able to get out a pretty even layer of paint. It's not perfect, but I figured I'd switch over to the airbrush and see if I could kind of blend this in. Using solvent or reducer to remove the paint is such an aggressive step. So that would always be my last option if given the choice. And this time I seem to be getting away with just using the eraser. So after that layer of paint was added on, I'm coming back with my eraser and erasing out this dark halo to the left of the area that I just painted in. Again, that's just some overspray from the airbrush, no big deal. I just want to clean it up before I add some more paint in. So this was working out pretty well, but I still noticed this very thin line of black paint just to the left of this strip mark. No matter how many times I went over it with the eraser, it didn't remove. So I'm switching over to another tool. This is a very small chisel and it works just like the X-Acto blade. I can come in and just scratch out tiny bits of that black paint. Of course, when I do this, I'm removing all the paint. So you'll see some small white spots, but that's not going to be a big deal. I'd rather have a lighter area to try to clean up than a darker area. And the reason for that is very simple. It's just because I'm only using a transparent paint and that paint will cover up a lighter spot, but it'll darken a dark spot. So that small chisel did a good job at removing some of that black paint. Now I can go back to the airbrush and start spraying this on those lighter areas. I always want to spray a small amount of paint because something strange that happens with acrylic paint is that the value shifts after it dries. If you ever painted a room in your house, you'll know what I'm talking about. The paint goes on lighter and then as it dries, it gets a shade or two darker. And the reason for this is pretty simple. It's because the binder in acrylic paint is kind of a milky white color when it's wet, and then as it dries, it becomes clear. If you mix a milky white color with an existing color, you'll obviously get a lighter value of that same hue. So to put it simply, that binder causes acrylic paint to be a lighter value when it's wet. Once it dries and the acrylic polymers bind together, it now looks clear and no longer affects the value of the paint. So meaning it looks darker. Was that confusing? I hope not. I tried to explain it the easiest way I could. So going back to this repair, it's important that I don't put too much paint on here because in a minute or two, as that paint dries, the value is gonna get darker. And in an airbrush painting, it's always easier to adjust or alter a lighter value than it is a darker value. So I'll continue with the eraser in this area and I'm erasing in small circular motions just so that I pull out a pretty even texture. This is looking pretty good at this point because it's basically an even value of highlight. So all we'll need to do is go back over to the airbrush and spray it over the top to just push it back a little bit. I'll start again by using a shield on that upper lip, just get some dark paint there and then a very thin light glaze of this transparent paint over the area we just erased. 
And at this point, I would say that this is pretty good. It's still not perfect, but it's a lot better than what it was. And that dripped paint is just barely noticeable. And when I zoom out to look at the entire painting, I really doubt that anyone would even notice that I accidentally spilled black paint on this one. But we still have this small dot of black paint on the chin, so let's fix that one now. So again, I started with the eraser just because it's the least aggressive technique. Some of the black paint toward the top of this dot had a chance to dry, so the eraser is just not going to work well here. But since this paint didn't fully cure, I'm going to use a different technique here. What I did was add a small amount of distilled water to the end of this eraser just by touching it on a wet piece of a shop towel. The water alone works well enough to break up the paint binder just because this paint isn't fully cured yet. And what's so great about this technique is that it's just a tiny bit of moisture that I'm using to break up the paint and the eraser comes to a very sharp point. And then I use a clean, dry cotton swab to lift off any of the dissolved paint. So it's a very simple technique, but it was effective and worked pretty well here. Then I'm just going back to the airbrush, using some CP in it, spraying it over the top, and then going back to the eraser to blend it all smooth. And with some patience, I could just blend that dot into the surrounding skin texture. And as I zoom out one last time, we could see that all of that paint was removed and the portrait is restored to its original state, so that I can continue painting it and finish this one up. So if something like this happens in your own paintings, just try not to panic. It's not going to be the end of the world. Just remember that almost every mistake can be repaired with some attention and some patience. So thank you for watching. I hope that this video was helpful, and I'll see you back here next week.